Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. In today's video, I wanted to let you guys know that one of our favorite sunscreens has been reformulated and they also increase the color range, which is awesome. So the sunscreen I'm talking about is the Australian Gold Botanical Tinted Face SPF 50 Lotion. It's now been renamed to the Australian Gold Botanical Tinted Face SPF 50 BB cream and it now comes in three different shades instead of just the one so this has been a long time favorite sunscreen of mine and I know a lot of you guys absolutely love it so when I discovered that it had been a little bit reformulated and released in more colors I wanted to let you guys know so I got the lightest shade so I could compare it to the original and let you know if these two are the same color for those of you who love this and it's a perfect match for you and then I also picked it up in the middle shade which which is the uh, medium to tan. So I'm gonna try both of these on for you today. I'm gonna do a little swatching and then in the end, what I think is best for me is to combine these two. So I'm gonna mix them together and put them on and you'll see all that in the video coming up in a couple of minutes. We'll also discuss the differences in the ingredients and how it wears under makeup, how it feels, if there's any real differences between it with the reformulation. I feel like the reformulation is very slight and it didn't really change it that much. So if it is your holy grail, you could probably still continue to use new formulation and love it. But if you had never used it before or you used it before and found it drying or you know just whatever, it may be slightly different enough that you may like it now, especially if you can get a better color match. So let's talk about the ingredients first. The important ingredient, the sunscreens, are exactly the same. So it's still 4% titanium dioxide, 4% zinc oxide. For the rest of the ingredients, there are 25 ingredients in here, and it's the exact same 25 ingredients. So there's no difference in the actual stuff that's in there. It's just listed in a different order on the label. So the main difference is that the first ingredient on the old formula was Illumina, and the first ingredient on the new formula is cyclopentasiloxane, and that is a silicone. Then the next ingredient on the new formula is water, and on the old formula, water came in last position. They both have glycerin, shea butter, squalane, and panthenol, which are all hydrating ingredients, but they both also contain alumina and hectorite, which are both fairly drying ingredients. So they should potentially offset each other. Now, I always found the original one to be a little bit drying on my skin, and I gotta say the same holds true for the new formula. I do find this one slightly drying. Um, it's not anything major where I'm like, oh my God, I'm dying. This is, you know, sucking the moisture out of my skin, but I can just feel the difference between say a sunscreen like this and one of my other holy grails, which is the Elta MD UV Elements SPF 44, which is much more of a hydrating formula. So if you would like the original, but felt it was a little bit drying, unfortunately this one, I don't feel like is gonna completely solve that problem, but it does have the silicone forward. So it does have a little bit of a different feel going on the skin. It does feel a little bit more silicone-y than the original did. I've tested it over the last few days with a couple of different foundations and without foundation as well just to see how it lasts because of course the original was very tenacious sunscreen. It was so hard to get this stuff off. You really had to like scrub at it which I don't recommend. The easier method is just to use an oil cleanse and that just takes it right off. Um, but I don't find the new formula to be quite as hard to remove. It's a little bit easier. I actually did a test on it wearing a, uh, you know, like not a medical mask, but a COVID mask, let's say, a going out mask. And the sunscreen rubbed right off on my nose when I was wearing the mask for only an hour. So that kind of surprised me because this one was always felt so secure. Um, and so I feel like this one isn't quite as tenacious as this one was. Under makeup, I feel like the original performed a slightly better for me. On my skin, which is combo, more silicone heavy sunscreens tend to slide around a little more and make my makeup slide around and settle into my wrinkles a little bit more. And I noticed that a little bit with the new formula. Not anything that's really like 
a deal breaker, but it is a little bit of a difference from this one to the original. I felt like the original was a little bit better as far as wrinkles are concerned underneath makeup. I'm wearing it underneath my makeup today. I think it looks pretty good, but I am getting a little bit of settling right up here. This is not my 100% favorite under makeup. I do love the Elta MD UV Elements 44 that I mentioned before. It is my holy grail under makeup because it's so much thinner of a consistency and you know doesn't make my makeup settle into pores or wrinkles and doesn't dry my skin so anyway that is still my number one holy grail but this is a great one i feel to wear to the beach because this is 80 minutes water resistant and the new formula still is and it's got all the same great things that the other one had for uh, as far as being reef friendly cruelty free paraben free fragrance free it's still got all those great call outs so pretty much the same formula now let's go back in time to when i first put it on and i'll show you the difference in the shades between the original to the current uh, fair to light tone to the tan to medium skin tone. I didn't get the tan to dark skin tone uh, As much as I would have liked to swatch it for you guys Then I've got a whole tube of you know sunscreen That's way too dark for me that I can't use let me just bring in the image from the website to show you how dark it is All right, so let's go back in time I will show you the swatches and me applying it and everything and then That'll be it. We'll wrap this video up. This one is the original formula and these are still available on Amazon. So if you absolutely love the original formula, I'd say go out and get yourself a bunch of these so that you can have a stock. Uh, sunscreen generally will last a year or two in your cabinet unopened so you can buy them and save them. All right, so here is what the original tint looks like. And let's go ahead and put the new fair to light tint right next to it. Oh, it is a little bit different. It looks cooler to me. It looks grayer than the original. Okay, so this one is the original and this is the fair to light. All right, now let's go ahead and put on the medium to tan. And see how this tends to just blend right in with my skin tone. So that is definitely a much, much better match for my skin tone. This looks like a good match for me over here where I have a lot of like freckles and sun damage, but out on the center of my face, I tend to be a little bit paler. So when I do use the medium to tan over my whole face, it makes me look really sun-kissed and really tan, which I kind of like about it. So um, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to apply a light layer of just this shade, the medium to tan on one side of my face and a light layer of the new fair to light on the other side of my face, just so you can see what they look like. And then I'm going to mix them together to show you what I get when I do a mixture. So I'm just going to go ahead and put on a little bit less, but after I build up the two layers, it will be, you know, the full amount, like the quarter teaspoon, but I just want to show you what it looks like. This is a sunscreen that you can use instead of makeup because it just gives such a nice tint to the skin and it stays in place and it's got more of a matte finish than the average sunscreen which you know a lot of the mineral sunscreens are really really luminous and uh you know i don't like to be super shiny then if they're luminous i feel like i have to powder them and everything so <laughs> this way with this one i just put it on i don't feel super shiny and luminous and I don't feel like my pores and texture are accentuated because it is a more of a matte finish. And I like that. And this also is a sunscreen that dries to a really like dry set feeling finish. So, you know, it doesn't stay greasy all day. I know that's what a lot of people don't like about sunscreen is that they just feel greasy all day. It also doesn't get tangled up in your hair. You can see I'm putting it right over my eyebrow. You might be like, why are you putting sunscreen on your eyebrow? <laughs> um, there's actually been a huge rise in skin cancers in the eyebrows, places that we don't tend to think to put sunscreen and also along the hairline. So when you're putting your sunscreen on, uh, it's important to get it in those areas and make sure that you don't neglect the edges of your face or your ears or your neck or anything because <laughs> The sun is going everywhere, even places that you don't realize and doing damage to your DNA. So anyway, we want to avoid those skin cancers. Okay, so see the difference? How this is just slightly darker, but still 
definitely very wearable for me on its own. Here is the Fair to Light. All right, so there's the two different shades. And now I'm just gonna do a little extra layer to even myself up. I think I'm going to do mostly this and just a tiny bit of this. I've just squeezed a little bit of each into the palm of my hand and I'm just gonna mix them together there. I feel like this used to be a little more dry feeling when it went on and it is a little bit more silicone-y feeling now than it used to be. I'm gonna give this 20 minutes to set up and dry. All right, our 20 minutes of drying time are up. This feels dry and set. It doesn't feel greasy. I don't feel like it's gonna be sliding around or coming off anytime soon. I think it looks great. I feel like my pores are minimized. I feel like it's very um, like primer-like and smoothing. I love the shade that I get mixing these two colors together. I don't think it's that much of a change that if you love the original that you're not gonna love the new formula. I think that they're very, very similar. They look the same, they feel the same. The main difference is that it's offered in more colors now, so I think it's a win-win all the way around. This used to be so hard to remove, and I know that was a big complaint about it. You really had to use oil to remove it. I feel like it's easier to get this off now, which is fine. It's still very dry feeling, very um, tenacious. It does stay on really well. All right, you guys, so that is it for today's video. I think that pretty much wraps up the differences and the similarities between the old original version of the Australian Gold and the new version of Australian Gold. Pretty much the same product, I would say, slight differences, and the good news is that it does now come in three shades. So I hope you can find a shade that is right for you or mix a couple together to get a shade that's right for you, and I hope you enjoyed the video. So if you found it helpful and informative, go ahead ahead and give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. As always, I thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate your watching. I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.